Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Motivation for Young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of Bible Study, episode 44. Today we're going to dive into John chapter 19, verses 38 through 42. Today we have Brother Gio, Brother Nate, and Brother Jave to discuss the scripture, to answer questions, and just to continue to learn more, to iron, to be able to sharpen iron. Today we're going to be led by Brother Gio, and our opening prayer will be done by me. So if you guys can, please bow your heads and close your eyes. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you, God. And thank you for this day that you've made. I rejoice in me, God, and God. I pray that now I'm able to come together with my brothers, God, to be able to discuss your word, God. I am to be able to sharpen iron, God. We pray that we'll be able to get a good understanding of your word, God. We pray that we'll be able to discuss all the necessary and important things that this scripture might bring, God. We pray that you reveal all the information that you are important in this scripture, God. We pray that we'll continue to educate each other and educate the people through this process, God. We pray that you continue to be with us each and every single day, God. In Jesus, in your holy name, amen. So we're wrapping up chapter 19 uh, with the burial of Jesus. I actually think that this is uh, right on time since we are around the corner from uh, what we call Good Friday. All right, let's get into it. Of 1938. Afterward, Joseph of Arimathea, who had been a secret disciple of Jesus because he feared the Jewish leaders, asked Pilate for permission to take down Jesus's body. When Pilate gave permission, Joseph came and took the body away. With him came Nicodemus, the man who had come to Jesus at night. He brought about 75 pounds of perfume ointment made by myrrh and aloes. Following Jewish burial custom, they wrapped Jesus' body with the spices and long sheets of linen cloth. The place of crucifixion was near a garden where there was a new tomb never used before. And so, because it was the day of preparation for the Jewish Passover, and since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. You remember Nicodemus? Yes. What was his story? Hold on, hold on. You're supposed to have your notes. You're looking up in the sky. This is not just for the viewers. <laughs> this is for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot that's in my... Oh, my bad. Yeah. I forgot that's in my yeah. book. Hold on. My mm -hmm. bad. <laughs> yeah, I, I ain't been here in a couple of weeks. I got to get you back and check. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I completely forgot that's in my book. Hold on. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's why it's good to have you around. That's fine. Yeah, I don't know. Hey. Just in case he decides to edit this part out, let me just go. You see, it. yeah, exactly. You know, he just <laughs> might too. He just might edit it out. This it's a little whippersnapper. Um, one of you calling us old one of the most, I think, I think his burial, I'll say it again, but I think his burial, the burial of Christ, is probably one of the most quietest aspects of his story. I mean, when you think about death and burying anybody, it's almost like a quiet, like a low, low. But um, one thing that stood out to me is that he actually fulfilled something. And we'll touch into that after Ezra answers this question that comes from earlier in the book of John. Oh, it gave you a clue. By the way, I will be editing that out just in case. I'm not keeping that in. I can't be making myself look bad. See? That's your problem. <laughs> That's your problem. <laughs> you worrying about what other people think about you, you see? This is keeping it real. So I'm worrying about how I'm worrying about how I would see myself on that. I'm not really worried about what other people think. That's not gonna be a look good on a good look on my part. There's so much to say about that 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 statement just now. That's fine. I'm telling you, I feel like we're about to have another real quick unedited session just because of that moment right there. That's crazy. We about, we just about to just put this chapter away. We're about to talk about you. That's what you almost about to make me do. <laughs> this is now not you know, hard. Now you know going forward, you better have that book as close to you as your cell phone. See. And, and this and this is how we started the journey. You were supposed to be looking for new things that you learned about Jesus. This was for you. And you waking us up, harassing us every Saturday at 8 a.m. to make sure we get on here. And this for what? For you to publicize a video? Get it together, bro. God talked to Nicodemus. Yeah, I know. Why? About what? N Nicodemus was the ruler of the Jews. What does that mean? Like, what does that mean he was a leader? Okay, what conversation did he have with Jesus? You say he spoke to Jesus or Jesus spoke to him. What kind of conversation was it? Is that, is that chapter four? 
No, no, you're right. You're right. It's chapter three. You're right. That's in chapter three. Chapter three. Conversation. Okay. Mm-hmm. Give you a clue. He spoke about being born again. Oh yeah, because he remember. Uh, I remember that. So he told he t- he told um Jesus told Nicodemus you need to be born again. But Nicodemus was thinking about a physical born again. But Jesus was talking about a spiritual born again. That's it. You only you know have to go deeper. If you want, you can. But that's all. You know I- yeah. Hold on. Got- but hold on. But I like to apologize okay. along along this journey. I completely, you know, kind of forget the book, even though it was really right by me. Like I don't remember the last time I wrote in this book from um, one of these Bible study. So um, I apologize. Uh, that's that's on my part. Uh, I'm obviously I'm gonna cut this out. You're not gonna make me look bad, but. <laughs> I, I think I think we got to check to the side now, because I think I think that has to be addressed. It's the second time you said it, right? Um, it, it's it's not about looking bad, right? Any any time as as a child of God, you feel like you're better than someone else just because you know the word. That's a problem because we're all sinners that need Jesus every single day, right? I need Jesus every single day. My title, uh, my years of being saved, don't mean anything. Right, I need Jesus just like the man on the street need Jesus. Right? So it's not about looking bad. It's not about what you know versus what they don't know. Because there's always going to be something that you don't know. Right? It's, this isn't like uh, English one-on-one where you, you, you study and you go through the class and you know everything and you move on. That's, that's not how it works. This is a, a daily, ongoing life journey. Right? So I, I think, I know you're joking, but... I fear that the underlying gotta gotta shake up a little bit. It's not about you. You want people to see I'm not perfect, right? I don't remember everything, right? Right? You you want to show them that you want to show them the real you. You don't want to show them this edited version, right? And and that's a problem sometimes in us reaching people. We show them um, who we are with this mask on, right? That we got it all together, right? Jesus saved me. I'm, I'm great. I'm blessed and highly favored. Nah, people want to see who you really are. That's how you reach people. Show them the real Ezra, the real Jave. That I'm Christian. Yeah, I've been doing this. But I go through it. Right? There are times I don't feel like praying. There, there are times I'm down and discouraged. Yeah, me too. Times I struggle, right? And I wonder where God is, right? You want to show them the real you. So this may reach someone more than the edited version. Keep it real with them. My audience like, yo, yo, I, I don't know everything. You know, sometimes I forget. But here's what I should do to change that. You know, I'm going to recommit to writing stuff down because I don't remember. Everything. I digress. And or yeah, but even to make that more appealing. You, you, I, I, I get I get I get Ezra's angle. I also get what Javé said. I would say, man, if anything, let them see you looking through the leaflet so they know that you you eat. <laughs> You know, you you could edit out our dialogue if you choose, but I would say at least let them see you looking through the, the book. Put a little music on it if you need. I, you know, <laughs> if you so choose. You know, just a little just a little creative cue for speaking as a creative. But um, at the same token, yeah, just bear in mind that uh, I think what makes your thing attractive is um, the authenticity of conversation. And because conversations are lost art, the authenticity of conversation and breaking bread, I think that's one of the reasons why you have this page. Not just motivation for young Christians, but also to um, have the authenticity of conversation. But to answer your point, you see how it's interesting in the book of John, Nicodemus, you see, you see certain characters playing out again in the latter part. Of, of the book of John, not just only in the beginning. And the, I don't know if you already, I don't know if Gio, you know, had any more questions, but there was a thought that that hit me. No, that, have, have at it, have at it, have at it. Because I, 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 I was mentioning to you, I think this is the mo- one of the most quiet, quietest parts of the story, which is okay, because the thing is, when you think about burying somebody, it's a finality. Now, the difference is, is that concerning jesus the christ is not the finality per se um so that's the thing that's that's the blessing i think one of the things that we we lose when it comes to burying or the process of the burial is the somberness of it but even in jesus there's a story 
in it, um, you see, you see that there's now another narrative says this, and that this could be a message with Joseph of Arimathea. Uh, one, I think it's Luke, or I think it's either Luke or Matthew, where it talks about he was begging for the body of Christ. Now, when you hear that, you say, "Man, that's a sermon right there," you know, that begging for the body of Christ. You might hear it soon. Stay tuned. I'm, I'm playing, but no, no, but there we go. <laughs> but now, man, now that's how you do a plug. That's how you do a plug. <laughs> I've come to beg for the body of Christ, and the thing is, what what amazes me about um this is that joseph was just like nicodemus because joseph um joseph was also someone who believed in the kingdom but he was kind of like nicodemus in that he was one of the, the fly by nighters so you even have you put so i guess even what Javé was saying the the fault not even said a little bit of the maskedness if, there, if there's such a terminology such a word in joseph and nicodemus's approach you see their parallels now. Joseph was a believer. He followed, but he followed secretly. My, my version said he followed secretly because of fear of the Jews. Even in his burial, there's a narrative that you, you have to pull away from that. Okay, if you're going to follow Jesus, there's no secret, no shame about it. That seems to be one of the um, undercover motifs that gets exposed throughout the book. Even in the burial, you see this, necess this necessity of the facade to be lifted. Now, yes, I understand you're an influential person, but you should never let, because of what you do, um, overshadow the process of who you're becoming. He was a follower and a believer of Jesus. It says he was a disciple. The Holy Christian Standard Bible said he was a disciple. Some others said that he was a follower. But he thought, so if, you, if you're a disciple... Just like you think about the 12, he was learning to follow the ways of Jesus, but he was never able to be adamant about it. And I think that's what led to the begging for the body of Christ, because he was a disciple. And he wanted to honor what Jesus was talking about when it came to his death and his burial and his anticipated resurrection. So there's something to take away from there. Um, Pilate gave him the permission. You see Pilate again. And then you see Nicodemus again. It's funny. Nicodemus is bringing one of the things, just to, just to highlight this, he's bringing a mixture of aloe, but he's also bringing a mixture of myrrh. Myrrh, this almost, for the burial sake, was the fulfillment of what the wise men gave to Jesus from when he was a baby. So when those men came, just painting, just, just connecting the dots, when those men came, it was a prophetic trip. So you're seeing elements of the beginning of his life playing out in his burial. There's not many people on this side of life that you can say that about. You see what I'm saying? This is what makes his story, this is what makes to me Jesus so great. Because like, you see it all, and when you really read it, the dots are connected. Even his burial isn't as solid as we think. The burial was really the setup. We get more scriptural breakdown when you go into the book of Ephesians, where it talks about when he goes down into Hades. So there's a connecting parallel. You're getting the literal side of the story. But as you go now into the years that follow the Pauline epistles, you're actually going to see the why he had to go down to Hades. So that was something, even his burial, it wasn't silent. That was my biggest takeaway in reading. I had a similar, um, I had a similar takeaway too, because... I just I had a feeling before I, I, I even read um, verses thirty um, eight to forty two. I just had a feeling it was gonna be so much significant. And the myrrh part, um, when I read the scripture, I was thinking, where where did they where again did they mention myrrh? And I'm like, oh, the three wise men. So now I'm seeing how thing is replaying. And like uh, the last time that you were here, but then how you point out that Jesus' first miracle was he turned water into wine. And when they pierced Jesus, water came out of it, came out of him. So I'm seeing how that connection was being made. I'm just seeing like the Bible kind of just repeats itself and there's uh, so much significance to it.
And also, I like to point out the part where Joseph um, come in. A message that I heard once is to not be an undercover Christian. J Joseph yep. was an undercover Christian. Mm -hmm. And we as men, women, people of God, we can't do that. Um, we're supposed to be, supposed to tell the whole world. I want the whole world to know I'm a man of God. I want, I want the whole world to know that this is what I represent. This is a God I serve. And we, we, we can't, we can't do that. It's like you try, it, it's like you're um, a shame of God when you do that. Just, it's like, it's like if you got a wife and then if anybody asks you in a relationship and you're like, nah, single. It's like, you single? <laughs> I, I compare it to that. You just completely hiding and, and taking the person that you're attached to out of the whole situation, acting that you're firm and alone with you. And message everybody out there, don't become an undercover Christian. S serve the Lord wholeheartedly and let everybody know, not in your speech, but in your actions. That's also a lesson that I learned. You don't always got to tell people that you're a Christian. Your actions, the way you behave, the way you operate should um, represent that you are a server of the Heavenly Father, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who is our provider. And by the way, my my brothers, Gio and Javi, told me that. Sound like you're preaching now, man. <laughs> I actually have a question for you. I've never done this before, so this is, I know you're like, whoa, you have a question. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm not trying to uh, be deep. I, I actually want you, I actually want you to take a little bit of a deeper dive and I'm going to actually, I, if I need to, I, I'm going to walk you through how to connect the dots and the bridges. All right. You said something that was very good. So I'm, I want to um, help you through this. So Ezra, let's revisit 38. Let's even revisit the beginning of 39. Let's let's look at um Joseph and Nicodemus. All mm -hmm. right. Um let's dig into that a little bit with the undercover Christian. If you look, read the text, can you possibly see the why, especially in relation to the context of what was going on back then? Yeah, I why can't. were they undercover? They were on kind you remember of under. Nicodemus, you remember Nicodemus, he came to Jesus by night. We don't know Joseph's route. He just said he was a disciple. Dig in a little bit more to the parallel, if you can, about this other undercover narrative. Can you see some of the bridges in today's world to why there's that uh, undercover narrative? Yes, I can, because um, back then, how they were afraid um, to profess uh, God and Jesus was because of the fear of the Jewish leader. And I'll say today, it will, it will be the fear of the people, um, especially like now we're living in a, such a judgmental time, such a time that persecute people for being who they are, representing and believing what you believe. Um, it's, I know for some people, not me, it's hard, it will be hard for them to profess it, knowing that it's going to be so much backlash. Let's connect the bridge to your generation, to your culture. Hmm. Very good, by the way. Joseph and Nicodemus were people who were of influence. So one thing you want to pay attention to influence as I, as I ask you this question now. So let's draw it to today. There might be many of your peers that you know, let's 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 pull on social media for a little bit. The stories say one thing, but you kind of see them, um, I guess, in their verbal profession, like, well, this is what I believe or X, Y, Z, but your stories or your life kind of um, gives a different story. Do you see a parallel to that from what you, you, you read about with Joseph and Nicodemus? You see that among your peers, that same dynamic. And the question I have for you is, how do we renew our minds towards that how does your generation renew their minds towards that like for example if my let's say when you go on my profile and it says god first family over everything but then when you look at my pictures i'm it's a good chance i'm not displaying that god is first right i'm standing on the top of a table in the club with bottles in my hand wilding out 
Um, I got a bunch of girls around me naked or something crazy like that. Like that's, that's kind of what he's trying to say. So, but, I, but I'm a man of influence. Like I got like a million followers, but I'm putting God first family over everything. I'm a, I'm a Christian. I'm putting that in as my, as my bio and my, um, in my, what do you call it? In my time, what do you call it? Uh, on my profile. Stories, yeah. <clears throat> my snaps. How do we fix that? Um, First thing, you got to recognize the wrong. Before you fix anything, you got to recognize what's the wrong, what's the problem here. Um, you can't be posting that guy first, family over everything, and then it's not it's not matching that. And with me, I always say, let your words back up your action. Let your actions back up your words. Whatever you say, make sure that you're representing it in whatever you do. If you're saying that God first, then he ain't saying that you got to post Bible scriptures, but just don't post stuff that you know that ain't godly. Um, but how 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 would we how would we fix that? I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't know. Love that, the that's that's hold, hold on one second, Nick. That's what we need in this form honesty you want to be a man of god what does that look like that looks like being truthful and honest at all times yeah i kind of get what you're saying like you you, you want to look a certain way on this platform you don't want it. but you don't know how your mistakes can motivate somebody else because they too made the same mistake that's how you're going to motivate people for whatever reason there's this false sense of once I receive and accept and walk around with the title of I'm a Christian, oh, I got to live in this bubble. I got to be perfect. And, 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 and you can't let anybody know that you made a mistake. From the pastor down to the new believer, like that's just the mentality. And that's what I think we just completely missed the mark. There will be no need for iron to sharpen iron if we're all sharp already. We're going to make mistakes. This is a growth process. It's a marathon. Trust the process. I think there's so much there to, to expound on and, and unpack. Um, but even going back to what Nate and Gio was saying, I, I think you, you may have people that post God over everything and um, family first, and their pictures are reflective of that, right? But off social media, is completely different, right? Um, and, and so we, we have to be careful in, in that sense too, right? Um, that and we, I've, I've seen a reference in, in other examples, right? People only post what you want them to see. Right. So it, it, it's, it's more than that, right? It's what you do off social media. It's what you do when you're, you're outside of church. And I don't want to divert too much the conversation. Um, I, just, I just wanted to add that, that in real quick, um, that, that there are some that may post that, but off social media is completely different, right? And then to, to add on to um, what G was saying too, um, this fear of messing up or seem having to be perfect, I think part of that too um, is one, we sometimes forget where we've come from, right? And so I, I'm a minister now, Nate, Pastor Gio, big time preacher, Ezra can't come to us because we're so high and mighty, right? And we've never messed up. We're so holy. And so th there's that barrier because the way we converse with him is, that, is as if we're perfect. We, we never messed up, right? And so when he messes up, he feels so much shame that he isolates himself. He keeps to himself because he has no one that can really relate to him, right? And the second thing is when people mess up, you know, we, we gather in our little circles and we, we condemn them as if we ain't doing anything, right? And, and most people would say, oh, yeah, remember you were young. Yeah, 
yeah, but you probably did something last week. <laughs> so none of us are perfect, right? And so that, that's a wall or a barrier that in Christendom that we really have to break down. And it's not just amongst old and young, but it's amongst all of us, right? Uh, that was my struggle too, Ezra, right? I, I had, as, as a young minister, a young, young minister, like, I felt like I had no one to go to, right? I was 20, 21, right? And, and I felt like if I go to my mentors, nah, they, they, I love them, but they're so perfect. You know, if I tell them all the crap I got into, nah, they're going to judge me. They're going, oh, you're a minister. You're filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, why, where's your power? And that barrier is there. And I would often isolate myself and feel like, yo, I'm the only one that ever go through this. I feel terrible. And the devil would play on that, right? And I start to feel the shame and the guilt and the weight of it. Um, and so what, what I'm saying is, is with me, is with us. Uh, don't let that barrier be there in the sense that you feel like you can't come to us and, and keep it real. Like, this is what I'm going through. I, I don't wear a mask. I'll tell you exactly how I messed up, when I messed up, why I messed up, so I can help you, right? Um, again, I don't want to... I kind of already did divert the conversation in a sense, but I, I just I just want to add that in real quick. Not necessarily, because if you're going to highlight, like I said, the verse 38 and 39 aspect, pay attention to this. So what was the difference with Joseph and Nicodemus or the parallel? They both had this thing that it, what caused their disconnect from their identifying with him, it was fear. You saw one in John 3 by his action. You don't really, like I say, you hear too much of Joseph's beyond what John says of him. John was able to identify Joseph of Armitage as a disciple of Jesus, but he didn't profess it because of fear. Nicodemus, because of his prestige, fear drove a man of prestige who was studied or should have been studying to look for the Messiah. See, that's part of why I believe he went to him by night because that tension of believing was happening. Sometimes what causes the disconnect and we don't talk about it is the fear. What, what's the fear of? The fear sometimes of the people that are around us. The fear of actually stepping out. The fear of following through on our belief system. See, that's why 38 and 39 spoke to me, not necessarily because of what they did, because what they did was noble. So you actually saw that they did love Jesus. But I just wanted us to address that narrative. You know, the idea that fear can cause the disconnect from the authenticity. Fear can cause a disconnect. The fear of people, the fear of what they'll say, even the fear of failing. You see that in Peter's story. As much as Peter tried to fight it, we talked about that a few weeks ago. He couldn't. He still ended up denying him. So even in his burial, you see that dynamic. <laughs> These men these men did the actions, they took his body so he wouldn't die dishonorably. Um, Nicodemus brings myrrh and aloe so they don't dress him and they wrap him up, this buried body that is. Like I said, that was the setup. The setup also going back to, I think it's John 20, um, not John 20, early on, I think it's 13 or 14, 13, somewhere around there where he says, unless a seed goes in the ground, it's not going to multiply. Um, th that was what spoke to me about 40 to 42. He was literally fulfilling that, that, that verse. I'm going to find it. I, I want to find it so uh, 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 that's clear on here. I think he said it in chapter, uh, I think it's, I'm trying to remember, it's one of the earlier chapters before he went away. It was when, um, after the Greeks were looking for him. And um, he was saying, unless a seed falls into the ground, the, the, 
that, that, that thing's not going to grow. The burial is essential. The burying of the seed in the ground is essential, basically. So that's what spoke to me about basically his, <laughs> his burial, literally. But the thing that blessed me was basically Joseph and Nicodemus as well. Fear can cause a disconnect from us identifying what we believe. We're afraid of what people think about us. We're afraid that we won't be able to be accepted. We're afraid we won't be, you know, we're afraid that uh, um, we'll fail. But failure is a part of the journey. Peter showed us that already. So it, it, as you're walking with Jesus, it, that's, that's exactly what it is. So Jesus' mission, and even in his burial, there's some things in there, you know, and it's okay. The it's okay to be silent and somber. I know we only highlight the burial part on the Saturday when we think about that resurrection weekend, and sometimes our actions are somber. We behave somberly, but it's just a setup. There's things happening in the ground. That's my statement in Jesus' name about. <laughs> amen. Amen. And with the um, fear part, I feel like I constantly live in like fear um, in the sense of I'm very paranoid with what I do in my personal life and on social media because I know how quickly something that you do can just mess everything up. So like I'm paranoid with it. Like, I really be mindful with the things I say either in my videos, online, or like in my personal life because like I'm paranoid with it. Like I work way too hard to let like, anything get in the way of like what I'm trying to accomplish. And I feel like I'm about to drive myself crazy trying to do that. I have to cut you off. Found it, bro. It's John 12, 24. That's what I meant to say. Unless the grain of wheat falls to the ground and it dies, it remains by itself. But if it dies, it produces a large crop. The connection to the burial. Well, at least mine. <laughs> That's good. <clears throat> hey, Ezra, um, the more you make being a Christian like a, a checkoff list, the more of a burden is going to become on you. Uh -huh. being, being a Christian is not like a to-do list. You, you, you have to allow the Holy Spirit to have more access of you and let him do the change. I, I remember when I first got saved, <clears throat> I was like, I can't, I can't do this. I can't do that. Um, okay, nope, I can't do that. Because like, it, it, and it wasn't driven so much by <clears throat> me not wanting to displease God. It was driven by how I looked in the eyes of others. Uh, and I think if we're not careful, that can drain us. That can cause us to just like, all right, I'm tired. I'm done. I don't want to do this no more. But what I noticed is that even like in my studies, it's like, it's not me who's changing me. My mind is made up. But it's the Holy Spirit working on the inside of me that's changing. The only thing that you are in control of is making up your mind to do this. And then you have to allow the Holy Spirit full access to you so that he can do it. He finish the work that he started in you. So try not to exhaust yourself. I got to do this. I got to do that. Um, no, I can't do that. I can't. Mm -mm. You just keep reading this word. Let this word get inside of you. Like even today, I'm learning something new, right? Like the connection that that, that Nate is just do, is making is just like phew, mind blown. Like like this man is literally Jesus is literally saying, "It's better for me to die because I will reap more fruit from my death than me living." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean for you, Ezra? You have to die to self. You don't want the people to see how you just made a boo-boo. But if you do that, you die to self and you open up yourself, you put yourself in the ground for a minute, guess what happens? Now you get more fruit. 
this Christian thing, as crazy as it sounds, we we have to go so hard to be Christians, not for us, for the next man. Mm. It's crazy. And we, we think it's about us. It's not, nah, it's just it's for the next person. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't die for himself. He was Gucci up in heaven, chilling. <laughs> the Philippians 2 talk about that. So you see, it's almost like um, you're making like what they call a metacog. You have this main idea, and now you're branching off the subcategories and ideas. Um, I referenced the terminology of metacog. I don't know anybody else uses it, but the first person I heard say was Dr. Caroline Leaf. We have this central thought, and then you have other... It's kind of like what we do. What we used to do in school. We had this central idea, then we bubble off ideas that would surround it. It, it was um, Jesus literally saying it was better for me. Okay, here's another thing. Thank you, Lord. That's why he couldn't embrace the earthly crown. He couldn't embrace the earthly crown for that reason. Nothing that this earth had. Because remember, they were trying to crown him so many times while he was living. So now that makes what he said in John 12, 24 make sense. The fruitfulness of my life's not going to come unless I fulfill everything that I need to do. Now we talked about that a couple of weeks ago in the prayer of Jesus, I believe. And then I tell me and you and Jillian was on here. Um, if, if, this, if it didn't go down that way, we wouldn't even be talking about Jesus, the benefit of him doing what he did in Philippians chapter two, where he said, he, God has exalted him and given him a name that's above every name. That at his name, every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Unless he was like that grain of wheat that went to the ground. So like I said, see, and I think that's one of the reasons why it's so good to do this because you can be alive for so long and miss those nuances of Jesus, but also you miss the opportunity to think this thing through. We read, Listen, I grew up in church. When they read about the burial part, they just read about it. Cool. They ain't no shouting about it. I get it. So <laughs> he's being buried. You know, we shout at the crucifixion. As gory as it is, we shout and pray God because of the benefit of it. But there's a benefit to him being buried too. We don't we miss the setup sometimes we come. We don't really shout about it because sometimes we don't shout about the setup. As you think you do. And you say, oh, God is setting you up for something. No, no. And you say, oh, I'm shouting, I'm dancing. No, 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 no. The setup is a process of itself. Look at a plant. When you put the seed in the ground, Gio, you don't get the fruit the same day you plant the thing in the ground. You don't, you don't get the apple the same day you put the apple seed in the floor, in the ground, rather. It's the process of the seed germinating and all that stuff. Now, we see it as a quick work because of what happened. And we get into that resurrection weekend. Because Jesus did a whole lot in the three days he was in the he was he was dead. You feel I me? Mean? But one of the things you want to take away, even in that, that was a process. He was physically laying there, but while he was physical body was laying there, he went down to Hades and took authority once and for all over death, hell, and the grave. So the burial was indeed the setup. So when he got up, he meant what he said in Matthew 28, all powers in my hand given to me in heaven and earth. So as don't 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 lose sight of that. See, if you let fear disconnect you, see fear does this disconnects you not only from identity, but fear can disconnect you from the promises. How much better would Nicodemus and Joseph's life might have been internally if if they had become unashamed now we understand the contextuality but sometimes these are questions you kind of gotta ask they might have lost their prestige but he went on to say in 25 what well, makes sense to gain this all all the prestige of this side of the earth and you lose your soul there's no fruit in that just something to think about Fear causes us to disconnect from our identity, 
because Joseph and Nicodemus couldn't really identify like they wanted to as followers of Jesus. But how much of the journey were they robbed of because they let fear disconnect them? Something to think about. Thank you for that, Brother Nate. I never looked at it. I never looked at the barrier like that. Like you said, church kind of like just emphasize like a little part of it, and then you like you move on. Like you don't. I haven't heard the part. It was like Jesus had to be buried like a seed, because when the seed go down and the water, you, you start putting the water on it, it's tied thing and now and it's just and it starts multiply it's like wow it's, that's just an amazing connection that i wrote down it's like jesus had to go down to multiply like a seed that that's just crazy it's crazy but i get it but it's like it's just crazy for that just to be revealed but going back to the point that you made um jill about not letting serving god be a to-do list I for sure work on that and keep that in my prayers and just start living for me. Just not worry too much about the outside of it. Yeah, bro. Just <clears throat> ask the Holy Spirit just every day, bro. Every day. I mean, as J- Jave always reminds me, I have my own little mantra. It's like, it's not daily. It's moment by moment. It's literally moment by moment. Like even after you transition from this, you know, this meeting that we're having, before you get to the next thing, take a moment, Holy Spirit, go before me and allow me to follow you. Like you, you have to acknowledge him in all of your ways. Everything. Bro. From conversation to conversation, interaction to interaction. In your alone time, right when you're idle, you just you have to be really in tune with your spirit because if not, your mind is a powerful thing. It can either lead you to believe that you need to jump off the roof, or it can lead you to believe that you need to do all that's within your power to follow Christ. You pick what side of the spectrum you want to be on. You're doing great, X. Absolutely. Going, you know, um, it, you don't want to feel, if you're feeling paranoid, you, you grow, right? And as, as you and Nathan said, ask, ask the Holy Spirit, right? My prayer uh, most days throughout the week is Romans 12, 1 and 2, right? Right? Um, that I'll present my body to God as a living sacrifice, that it be holy and acceptable in his sight, right? not conform to the, the behaviors and customs of this world, but be ye transformed by renewing of my mind. I'm daily asking God to renew my mind, right? And so it, it, won't, you, it won't feel like paranoia. You'll become mindful of certain things, right? You know, the, the Holy Spirit will, will sensitize you, right, um, to certain things, right, certain environments. Um, but it won't feel like this checklist, like you got to, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that. Uh, you, 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 the person God will transform you to become and how the Holy Spirit will pour into you, you won't have an appetite for it. It won't even be like, oh, I can't. Oh, oh, that's, that's, you won't have an appetite or a desire for it. It will just completely transform and change your desires, your heart, your mindset. Right? But that, that comes with spending time. Right? So the more you continue to spend time as you've been doing, um, you'll grow. Right? And, you, you, and you're growing. You are growing. You're doing amazing. I, I, I pray that more young people will be like you, right? In, in, in the sense of your desire to study the word, right? Just don't let it be studying the word to make a video, right? Let the word hit you first, right? Not just because you want it to hit someone else, right? So don't look at this as just a time of recording so someone else will see it. But in doing it, see yourself in light of the word, right? And that it will, too, as it blesses you, as it changes you, as you conform to his word, then your prayer is that it will do the same for someone else. But great job. I'm proud of you, right? And anytime you feel 
those moments of paranoia or whatever, or you feel down, or you, you discourage, or you're not sure what to do. I'm, I'm pretty sure I can speak for all of us and say that, call us, text us, right? Um, whatever. And, and you know that we'd be there and, and to help you. And we're not judgmental. Right? So just want to throw that in. Great job. Keep it up. Stay focused. Stay humble. Right? And keep doing what God leads you to do. This is big, big bro talk, all right? We ain't going to just praise you when you're doing good. We're going to let you know when you're doing wrong, too. That's exactly, you know that's why. exactly why I love all y'all, because y'all, y'all, y'all ain't afraid to um, <clears throat> tell me I'm wrong. That's exactly why I got y'all around me. Well, one of the reasons, because I'm, I'm like, to me, if you have people around you that can't point your roles out and tell you you're wrong, just don't have them around you. That's just my personal um, thing. And I think you guys so much. It's like when I started the journey, it was like, oh, that polished boy, yo, you know, I'm here to learn about the word. Then along the way, I got the dust on me and I got caught up. And I, saw it. And I just came to it from like the video standpoint, not even too much about the learning standpoint. And now I got that recollection point out by y'all. It's like, I'm coming towards this on a video standpoint. To make sure other people eat instead of let myself eat. And thank you for pointing that out. Um, I'll, I'll I'll dust myself off and I'll I'll I'll, 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 I'll come back. But I'm gonna keep every single thing in this video. I ain't perfect. I'm a hot mess inside. But I'm I'm working. I'm actually going to diffuse the last portion of your sentence. You're in a becoming. You're in your becoming. Mm -hmm. Um, I maybe it's because I low key hate the connotation of hot mess, but I understand it. I understand what you're saying. But you're in the becoming. Remember what the Bible says, and I think I told you this in First John. And let me just say it right from verse from First John, chapter three, because this is the dream that we're all um, on now. First John three and two said. Dear friend, we're God's children now, and what we will be has not yet been revealed, but we know when he appears, we'll be like him, because we'll see him as he is. We're in the becoming. Don't diffuse any part of the journey of your becoming. Did I just give you an affirmation? You're in your becoming. You're not the same person you were even last week, not just in personality, but also in your growing in the scriptures. So I just want to just give that sense of added affirmation as well for you. You know, we're all in our becoming. Might be in different stages, but we're all in the becoming. We're all trying to look like Jesus Christ. Not a better version of ourselves, but more like Jesus Christ, bro. So yeah, for real, keep it a good work. That's my, yeah. Yeah. Just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, love all y'all. Thank y'all for continuing to pour on me. Each and every single week. Thank y'all um, for just the thoughts, the opinion. I'm gonna I'm gonna start coming to y'all more because I'm still on that standpoint of like trying to deal with everything on my own. Even though I know I can't do it, and I know I got people around me that I could go talk to, I'm still stuck in that mindset, and I gotta I gotta work on that. I I gotta I gotta pray more because you know I, I have my days, and I'm like yo, let me call Jill, let me call Javi, let me call Brother Nate. And, but then when that thought comes to your mind, like, nah, take it out. Do it by yourself. Just hand it on your own. I just, I go with it. Because I'm still I'm still learning how to be okay being vulnerable. And just, like, just letting go. I'm, I'm, I'm working on that. And I'm going to continue to um pray. Keep 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 me in y'all prayers. Uh, just, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to just... just the journey. It's fine, bro. Just keep pushing, man. Don't worry. We 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 got each other. All right. Um. Yeah, yeah I'm good. Go ahead, Jay. Um. No, I was just saying. I, I know nowadays, the past month, I, I may seem a little bit busy, but still text or call me. Right. Don't. I'll I'll respond eventually. I may not get back to you throughout the day. Just text or call me still, and, and I'll get back to you. Don't feel like I'm I'm too busy or I've become busier that. You know, I'm unreachable, right? So that 
you, you feel like, you know, what's the point? Let me not even try because he's not going to answer. He's not going to pick up. I will get back to you. And I love what you said about, about being vulnerable. You need someone that you can be vulnerable with, right? You need that person. As a man, as a young man, you know, it may feel like you need to be macho all the time and tough, right? But I, I literally called Gio, I think, uh, I think it was Thursday or Wednesday. I was telling you, I had a rough day at work. I felt like I wanted to cry. Like, <laughs> it was a tough day, right? But, but I have in him a, a brother that I can be vulnerable with. Right, that I can, like, yo, it, it wasn't, it wasn't good today. This is how I'm feeling, honestly. Bro. <laughs> like, like, it was rough. You know what Boy, I'm call me. He was like, he's like, yo, can we just pray? <laughs> he was hurting, but that's that's why we're here. That's why we're here. So, I I have my moments too. I call him up, I'm like, yo, I need you, bro. <laughs> but that's what it's about. Now, guys, we'll be going to our closing prayer for today, which will be done by our brother, the minister, Brother Javi. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord. Thank you so much for another day. We are so grateful for this time together on Zoom. We pray, God, as we continue to dive into your word, that you will continue, oh God, to mold us and shape us and conform us into who you have created us to be. Lord, we thank you for uh, what you're doing, oh God. I pray, God, that iron will continue to sharpen iron, that Holy Spirit, you'll continue to reveal, Father, and that we'll continue to conform to your word. Let this not just be a discussion and we walk away from it and nothing happens, but let us apply your word to our lives on a daily basis. Let us continue, oh God, to uh, study your word and to seek oh, to become more like you. Father, we pray that you'll touch Ezra, God, that you'll be with him and strengthen him as a young man in the faith, oh God, that you, oh Father, will, oh God, help him in those moments where he feels isolated, when he feels alone, God, knowing, remind him that he has brothers that he can come to. And I pray, Father God, that you'll continue to bless him and inspire him as you, oh Father God, bless his ministry, oh God. So we thank you now. We leave all things in your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you guys so much for coming along on this journey. This is episode 44 of Bible Study. Just thank you so much for coming along on uh, this journey to learn with us, to just continue to have these conversations. Um, if you haven't already, like the video, subscribe if you're new, turn on your post notification. That way, anytime I upload YouTube, it's saying your notification. This is Motivation for Young Christian. I'll see you guys.